Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name, Lord, for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come together uh, on this occasion. I ask, oh God, that you would bless and that you would give us insight and that you would give us understanding uh, concerning your word on this morning, Lord God. Pray, oh God, that you would bless homes and families. And if there are any that are sick among us, I pray that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, Lord. Lord God, we pray, oh God, hallelujah, that you would lead us and guide us even as we go through the lesson. In Jesus, your precious name, we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. All right, so <clears throat> today we're going to uh, begin in um, the 15th chapter of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 15. And I guess I, I want to go back to um, that 27th verse real briefly. And um, portion of the scripture said that, uh, well, this, this verse says, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And so when they concluded um, uh, their missionary journey, uh, and they're now back in, I believe, in, in Antioch, uh, uh, that is any Antioch in Syria that the scripture says here that they rehearsed or they related what had happened uh, throughout their journey, uh, their dangers, their success. Um, and you know, in doing this, it, it gives them a, a, a proper account of what had occurred and it also, uh, was an occasion to, to give God the honor and the glory. And again, to, to let them know uh, what the Lord, amen, had done. And again, when he says here, and how he had opened the door of faith. In other words, an opportunity, amen, was allotted them to, to preach the gospel, amen, among the Gentiles. And you know, this is kind of what we, um, you know, um, come to understand that unless the Lord opens a door uh, or uh, gives the opportunity, then there is none. And so, you know, one of the things that, and that's one reason why we move as the Lord directs and as he guides, because it's going to take him to open up that door, all right, to, to uh, bring forth uh, or that opportunity. So I just wanted to um, uh, share that. And then we're, we're, we're heading as we go into chapter number 15. And, um, and verse one says, and, and certain men which came down from Judea taught uh, the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. All right. And so it is in this that we, you know, up uh, we see uh, the first occasion uh, where there is uh, an internal um, dissension. Uh, everything up until this point had been external to them. Uh, that dissension, that opposition um was uh external to the to the to the body to the church here and it is on this occasion you know and luke writes about uh this first uh dissension within the church and how it was handled uh, it is if you will as recorded by luke the sort of the first unhappy debate which arose uh within uh the church. And so, 
a certain, it does not name names, but it tells us certain men, and obviously came down from Judea and taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, that ye cannot be saved. And these men were um, uh, Jews who were, if you will, were converted to uh, Christianity or uh, became believers within the church of Jesus Christ. And uh, now, and they, they came preaching or teaching a doctrine that essentially talks about the fact that except you be circumcised, except you take on, um, again, um, uh, in, until, uh, uh, until you uh, uh, take on uh, the, the ways or, or the teachings of Moses in terms of uh, uh, circum and circumcision by and large sort of covered it all, but it was essentially talking about them uh, taking on the laws of Moses. And, and, he's, and they're saying that if you don't do this, ye cannot be saved, okay? And so again, as, as except ye be circumcised, this was, you know, again, the leading or principal right uh, of the Jewish faith and, and even the proselytes, this is one of the things that they would have to do, amen, praise God, to be a convert to the Jewish faith. And so essentially uh, what they are saying is you have to, again, do the same. And, and, and when they talk about this, they're talking about to their uh, Gentile brethren. And when therefore Paul and Barnabas, who had no small dissension or controversy and disputation or discussion with them, determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other men of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So it could not be settled among them. So it was um, encouraged that they would go up to uh, the leadership at Jerusalem. And this is one of, the, one of the things that lets us know that they recognize those apostles uh, at Jerusalem um, essentially to be their leadership. And, and so whatever they determined or was determined there, uh, they would abide by. And so, um, so we see it was determined or decided that Paul and Barnabas and certain others would go with him. And, and apparently this is agreeable to really to both sides. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria and declaring the conversions of the, the uh, excuse me, the Gentiles. So even on their way, amen, praise God, they're giving testimony of what God is doing. And they cause great joy. That alone caused great joy unto all the brethren, praise God, amen, that they had encountered. Um, verse four, and when they were come to Jerusalem and they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. And, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. And so we, we get a little bit more this, uh, understanding as to who uh, these uh, Jews were. So they were of the sect uh, or that uh, of the Pharisees, which believed saying that it was needful or necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together uh, to consider, for to consider of this, this matter. Um, and when there had been much disputing, now, now when it says disputing here, it's, it, it really is speaking to discussion. Okay, not folks yelling, you know, at each other and, you know, but it, it, it talks about discussion. Uh, and it says here, and when there had been much disputing, uh, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago, 
God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So he's referring back, amen, praise God, to that 10th chapter uh, of, of, of the book of Acts and his encounter with Cornelius and those that were with him um, uh, in his household. And so, and he says here, and God which knoweth and, and the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Amen. Praise God. So they received the same Holy Ghost, the same spirit that they, those Jews, Jewish proselytes, amen, had received. And look at what he says here. And he says, and to put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts, how? Uh, by faith. In other words, cleansing them, amen, praise God, by faith. And essentially by faith, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so again, there he, the Lord here uh, put no difference there. Okay, um, if you want to look at it in this sense, the message that God gave Peter when he went to Cornelius' house did not include anything about them, amen, keeping the law of Moses. He preached the gospel and the Holy Ghost fell. And so he says again, and put no difference between us and them, purifying them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why? tempt ye God or provoke God, all right, to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear, okay, in other words, you know, so he, he, he speaks, amen, praise God, about even, you know, and he, he describes what they want to do to them, essentially as a yoke, you know, being placed upon their necks and really the reality of a, a, a yoke of bondage. And so when he, when he talks about this and you know, why would you put something so burden and oppressive upon them? And I wanna go to Matthew's chapter 23, book of Matthew's chapter 23. Uh, Verses one through four. Um, and it reads, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe that observe and do but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Praise God. Hmm. So they, they put these burdens on you, but they themselves don't even do. Okay. Um, and and you know, the idea, and I, I really believe when, when he describes this and what Peter, you know, describes it, it, it is that which has been added. In other words, those things that, um, that, that point to the fact that, you know, that, that, that make it more of a burden, even than what the Lord intended when it was given, uh, a lot of which they um, uh, uh, practice or, 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 or we're doing with things that were not even contained in what God has said. They, they, uh, the Jews had, I believe, the Talmud. They also had the, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the, the other uh, um, um, uh, book uh, that they had and begins with an M and I have a copy of it, but it is and, and these were, were writings of rabbis and things of this nature, supposedly to show them how to carry out the word of, of the law or the law. And a lot of which, again, 
were things, as, and even as the Lord spoke earlier in the gospels about how that, you know, the things that they had instituted in many cases made the word of God of none effect. You've got them doing things that I did not require of them, praise God. And so, you know, it, you, you, and I, I really think, you know, it is pointing to those things, that those things that were added. Uh, the Mishnah is, is one of the uh, things that, uh, books that we're talking, and what you find out, they spent more time, you know, uh, embracing these writings and the actual writing of the word itself. And, you know, give you an example in the Mishnah, I think, it, you know, the uh, uh, a male child had to be uh, circumcised by the eighth day. And, and what they did in that, you know, they subscribed to that, but they also gave you sort of exceptions. Well, if that day fell on a, on a Sabbath, then you, 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 could, you could do it the next day or something like that. And, and, but that's not what the scripture says. And so again, you know, here again, one of the things that we really need to follow, what is the word of God? All right, you'll be surprised, and, and, and it's something we were like, oh man, that's just crazy. And all. but I, I, you know, I know of those that will, you know, they'll they'll um, uh, um, they'll embrace their church or their organization's discipline book more first before the Word of God. And you know, the point becomes, you know, again, what is the author? What is the final authority? You know, it is the Word of God. And so again, let, let's let's keep that in mind. Uh, verse 11, he says here, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, we shall be saved even as they. We shall be saved even as they. That's Peter saying. He says, we shall be saved even as they speaking. Now he's talking about the Jews. In other words, how? By faith, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and, and Paul. And remember, they are coming back. They're just, you know, they're back from their first missionary journey and declaring, look at what it says here, what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Sort of, you know, these these signs and these wonders, amen, praise God, that not only did he do, if you recall, that were done among the Jews, but now so now it is the same things that are being done, amen, praise God, along, um, to the, to the, uh, among the Gentiles as well. I think we uh, were just um, talking about, praise God, a lame man who was lame from his mother's womb and the Lord healed him, he delivered him. Well, we see the same thing happening just at the gate of the temple in the third chapter of Acts, praise God, among the Jews. He's doing the same things, praise God, amen. That same power of God is being wrought or worked, amen, praise God, among the Jews, as well as among the Gentiles, as well as the Jews. And this is this is one of the things, you know, even, and I'm sure even now as, as Peter speaks or just, be, you know, just prior to, you know, uh, uh, giving it over to Paul and Barnabas here, he, you know, again, the Lord gave him this by revelation, letting him understand, look, you don't, you know, for salvation, for to be, to be, amen, praise God, to become a believer in me, praise God, amen, praise the Lord, amen, it does not, you know, it, 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 it does not take, amen, simply those things as you see them in terms of, you know, um, as, he shall, as, as he shared with him about, you know, in his vision about what he had saw and, and, he, and the Lord had to uh, tell him, look, what I have cleansed, you know, call thou not common or unclean, praise God, and so, you know, what, and what he allows and what you see and, and, and even, you know, thinking about this, even on the way in today, you know, it is that broadening, uh, you know, because if, if you look at it, if we're not careful, our view of things simply are in our own orbit, if you will, or in our, our own, you know, you know, um, you know, uh, place where we are and, and if we're not careful, we're, what we'll start doing is we'll start boxing in 
the word of God. And, and it only applies to a certain group or a certain people or what have you. And here again, it is something that was there, you know, from the very beginning. You know, and when I talk about the beginnings here, I'm talking about in Genesis and the Lord dealing with Abram, you know, and 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 so it is there. It is it is it is there from the very beginning that what God was intending, what God was going to do, amen, praise God, was make this available, not just simply to the Jew, but also to, to, to the whole of mankind, praise God. Now, one of the things perhaps that the, you know, up until this point, the, the Jews had perhaps, amen, praise God, amen, um, uh, relied upon is simply that it was those that wanted to embrace the, their faith, then there are these requirements that, you know, you become as we are. And we see this even in the case, you know, of those that um, even a eunuch who made his way, who, who we can perhaps tell was a proselyte, who made his way up to, to Jerusalem for the feast and things of this nature. Again, there were those that were, you know, again, that, 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 that were Gentiles that became those proselytes that were baptized and 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 they call it you know we we call it a you know when we say baptism they had to go through these cleansings which were essentially baptisms okay and also again that circumcision and all what are you doing you're becoming like we are oh God hallelujah amen but that that but the intention here is not to become like them but to be as God will have you to be. Long before we get to this, you know, just simply um, talking about, even in the Old Testament, it talk simply about, amen, praise God, a, 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 circumc a physical cir circumcision, but it also talked about a circumcision of the heart, praise God, amen, that righteousness, amen, that God looks for, that, 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 that expects, amen, to come from our heart, or our mind, if you will, praise God, and, and so that was always there, that was always the intention, so what we see, we see in one sense, amen, a lot of physical things carried out, amen, praise God, but a lot of these physical things were pointing to really, amen, praise God, that those spiritual, and if, if you will, not just spiritual, but even those internal things that should be working on the inside of us, amen, praise God, you can bear, amen, have that sign of circumcision in your flesh, praise God, but that does not mean that your heart is right, praise the Lord, amen. And so, you know, you look at it, and, and I think Paul talks about it to Timothy later on, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He, he, he looks the part, praise God, amen, praise God. He, 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 you know, he has the proof within his flesh, praise God, but God, which knoweth the heart, praise God, he, he's, he's looking on the heart first, praise God, not, not your flesh. But on your it, but your heart, praise God, Amen. And so you know, but it, this is what we begin to see. This is what you know when you look at it. And so even as he deals with um, uh, Peter, and, and 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 what are you seeing? You're seeing a broadening, you know, of his perspective as it relates to God. He's all he's he's kind of, if you will, it's like it's like you know the Lord's you know taking off. I have these glasses on and. And the Lord is like, you know, okay, Peter, take these off. Now, put my glasses on and I want you to see what I see. Praise God. Amen. And so when, when you, now, if you go back to, to Acts chapter, chapter 10, and Peter, I want you to understand this, um, Acts chapter 10. Now, Peter preaching now with his new glasses on, with God's glasses, all right? Verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Y'all see that? Amen. His, his view is broadening. Hallelujah. Amen. But in every nation, in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him, praise God. 
his view is broad. Maybe at this time, he wasn't even thinking so much, amen, praise God, about the Gentile, praise God, amen, praise the name of Allah. Not to say that he hated them, but his view, amen, they were not in his view, praise God, as one or not even to be considered as someone unless he has become a proselyte, amen, that could possibly, amen, praise God, be righteous in the eyes of the Lord. You see what God can do? And this is what we need the Lord to do for us, praise God. Lord, open our eyes. Help us to see. I, 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 and aside to this, and I, I was looking at this today, and I, I was talking uh, to my sister, and she made mention of what was going on in India. We were talking the other day. And, you know, I'm, I'm up today and getting ready to lead, get, out of, you know, get out of the house and you know, and I looked down, I looked at the, the Washington Post and, you know, only to see that I think uh, their totals were um, that those that contracted the, uh, the coronavirus were over 400,000 on yesterday. Praise God. And those numbers are climbing. And they're, you know, projecting that if things don't turn, turn, there'll be over half a million. There'll be up to a half a million in the not too distant future. Praise God. And, you know, I, I, I begin to look at it and I begin to look at um, how devastating this is and how that, you know, they gave an example, I believe, of eight that, have, that, that passed at one hospital because they had to wait an extra hour for oxygen to be delivered. Those eight died because they lacked the oxygen that they needed to give them. Praise God. And you've got so much of this going on. And, and, and when I look at this, and when I look at the fact that, you know, sometimes even, you know, in our prayers and things of this nature, you know, we can, we can find them to certain places, certain people, certain groups and things of this nature. But I, but I need us to understand what we're dealing with is not just simply something in the United States, something in the DMV area, something, amen, praise God, that is just simply on the, con the, the North American continent. This is worldwide, praise God, amen. And so why do I say that? I kind of say that tied to what I'm saying now is your view has to, your, has to change. Just because things may be calming down where you are on a worldwide basis, in many cases, it's going the other way. You know, I'm talking to Elder Dell, who's pastor with one of our church in, in Toronto, and he's telling me about how things are, you know, are, are, are going the wrong way up there. And, and you know, even now, you know, because it's, it's primarily a Jamaican church, and so there are those that are in Toronto that can't get to to Jamaica and those that are in Jamaica that can't get back to Toronto because they've canceled flights for the next two months. Praise God. They can't get home. Either, you know, those that are in Jamaica trying to get back to Toronto can't get to their home. Those that, like such as Mother Morris in T Toronto can't get back, amen, praise God, to Jamaica. Amen. But if we're only concerned about our orbit, our, where we are, and man, things are getting great. Things are, you know, I'm getting to the point where I can do this and I can do the other. You got to look beyond that. Praise God. You, you just can't simply, oh man, I'm just glad to be able to, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hearing what the CDC and all of these others are saying and everything, but this thing is bigger than us. <laughs> and, and I think the Lord wants us to recognize that because here's, here's the side of it. Here's, here's the thing about it. If we don't recognize that, guess what? It plays out in what we pray about and what we don't pray about. It manifests itself in who we pray for and who we don't pray for. Praise God. Amen. And so it's one of those things where, you know, I, I, I say that, amen, praise God, amen, for us to consider these things. Praise the Lord. You know, it is in, 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 um, in the book of Exodus, and this is, I believe, after, um, you know, they, they uh, one of the things the Lord says about 
Israel is that they would be priest to the nations, to the nations. So in other words, they would become the priest to the Gentile. Gentile is another name um, for nations, praise God. And, and so look at his thinking. Look at, look at what he's saying. You're, you're going, and what does a priest do? He, they, they proclaim or they teach the word, amen, praise God, to others. And, and, and so, but, but what, look at what he says. But you're going to do this not, amen, internally only, not to one another, not to your own, or those of your own, you know, people or nation, but you're going to do this. You're going to be this for me to the world. Praise God. Well, guess what the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be doing? Amen. We're not just simply here to pray for the saints, to pray for the saints, unsaved children. Praise God. But this thing goes further than that. Yeah, yeah, you, you all get what I'm saying? You know, I know there's that mentality. Look, you take care of where you are and I'll take care of where I am. Well, God is everywhere. Praise God. And he's calling us to do what? Pray for everybody everywhere. Praise God. And, and so, you know, I, 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 I just wanted to, to take that opportunity, you know, and, and even when, let me just, Lord have mercy. Even when we talk about prayer, I'm not talking about saying words. Praise God. Just simply saying words, just simply saying the first things that come to our mind and things of this nature. But God, Amen. Praise God. You know, the reality of it is he wants to use us in prayer. Praise God. Amen. There are things, amen, praise God, that only prayer, amen, can change. Praise God. And, and so it is not just simply, amen, something we do. It is not just simply a, something, you know, a sound and, and, we, and we repeat this repetition and all this for a period of time. But it is uh, it is a fact, praise God, that prayer can bring about deliverance. Prayer can bring about salvation. Praise God. Amen. Recognize what is happening, that when we pray, these prayers go into the very presence of God. Hallelujah. And they're not there just to be there. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and I want to remind you, remember Amen. Praise God. And I believe, amen, Elder Williams was speaking on Jonah and Jonah said he is crying from the belly of hell, but his prayers went into the throne room of God. Praise God. They entered in, amen, praise God, to the presence of God. Amen. And it affected deliverance. Praise God. And so, you know, it is, it is, but see, what is this? This is what the Lord, not what we want to do. Praise God, but it's what God, amen, praise God, purposes us to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants us to pray. Yes, he can do it on his own. Praise God. But he's sovereign. And this is the way that he's established it, that he wants to use his church. Just as he wanted to use Israel, amen, to be priest to the nation, and they failed miserably. Praise God. His church will not fail. Why do I say that? He declared in Matthews, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise God. It will not die, but it not only will not die, but it will accomplish what God has intended for it to do. Praise God. Why? Because it's his church. God has never been defeated. It's his church. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I, I just want us, amen, praise God, to, to, to understand these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, you know, you, you just want, and so what, what, what is happening? What should be happening to us? Our view should be expanding. Praise God. And I'm, I'm not talking about your natural view. But you should be, amen, praise God, if we're in communion with God, if we are obeying God's word, praise God, our view, just like Peter's view was expanded, 
amen, by the vision that the Lord had given him and even, amen, coming to Cornelius' house and, and, be, and, 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 and hearing the testimony, amen, praise God, from Cornelius himself, amen, praise God, and looking upon, amen, praise God, the, the, the audience that had assembled and, and recognizing, amen, there are others, amen, praise God, who never even were circumcised who never, glory to God, stepped on, amen, praise God, our side of the street, but yet God has cleansed them. He is dealing with them, praise God, just as well. And this is one of the things that Peter, amen, praise God, is trying to get across, amen, to his audience in this 15th chapter, praise God. Amen, God did not require of them, amen, praise the Lord, amen, praise God, to become as we are. Hallelujah. Praise God. And even Paul in Galatians talks about this. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. The law does not save us, but faith toward God does. Amen. And so, amen, we see this. And when you, when you look at it, praise God, and that is available, praise the name of our God, to all. I, I, I don't want to let me calm down just a little bit. Praise God. Uh, amen. I, 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 you know, it's just, when you think about this and when you think about, you know, the fact that, you know, God just wants to open our eyes. There are so many things that he wants us to see. You know, yes, we are a church. Yes, collectively, we are the body of Jesus Christ. But each and every one of you, praise God, there are things that the Lord wants to show you. Praise God. He wants to open up your eyes to praise God. And, you know, my mind often goes back to you know, uh, the account of Elijah and the Syrian army surrounding the city and, amen, the servant and how, amen, he's afraid and, and, and you know, the, the prophet tells him, they that be with us are more than they that, you know, that are against us. And then he prays, he petitions God and he says, amen, Lord, open his eyes, give him a broader perspective, let him see he had so, some of our sight, amen, praise God, uh, you know, we talk about it, amen, praise God, as having tunnel vision, and amen, we can't, you know, I, I have I have a camera, amen, praise God, and you can, you can change the lenses on that camera, you can use a telescopic lens, which will, amen, narrow, praise God, amen, the window that you're seeing from a distance, and it's tight, praise God. And then you have those that are wider angle lenses and it allows you to see a broader view. Now, here's the thing, everything, amen, praise God, that I'm looking at through that tight lens, even though I don't see it, it's already in place. It takes a wider lens to see these other things that I cannot see in that, that, now, that, in that telescopic lens. Y'all see what I'm saying? Amen. It's just like what, 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 when you look at Elijah and that prophet, look, that which was around Elisha was already there. Praise God. Amen. Though those chariots, amen, praise God. Well, he just needed a wider angle lens. His focus was now left focused on, amen, praise God, that Syrian army. That's all he could see. I mean, think about this. He's looking at, you know, he's listening, amen, to what his master, what the prophet is saying, they that be with us. And the lens that he has, he can only see himself and the prophet. Oh, God. But when the Lord, when, when the prophet prayed, Lord, open his eyes. Oh, God. You know, I, excuse me, but Lord, give him another lens. Give him a wide angle. Let him see what's really going on here. Praise God. Amen. And that's what the Lord wants to show us so many times. Our, vote, our, our focus is so narrow in on what we're dealing with. Praise God. And all we can see is the issue. All we can see is the problem. And Lord, and Lord is like, I just need you to see what's behind. Amen. Praise God. All, all you're seeing is this much of a picture. Praise God. And the Lord wants to show you more. He wants to show you that your deliverance is not coming. It's already here. Praise God. It is already there. And, and the reality of it, when you go back to that account, 
everything that the prophet and that his servant needed, amen, to get them out of this situation was already there. And the thing is, all that their enemy did was walk, glory to God, into, if you will, amen, praise God, a trap. Do you really think that that Syrian army would have done, would have surrounded the city if they realized that, amen, praise God, those that were with Elisha were, were, were compassing the mountains? Oh, no. They would have saw that, turned around, and went back. Lord, have mercy. It's for our eyes only. Hallelujah. There are some things that are for your eyes only, praise God. Amen. So, and that's why sometimes people just don't understand why you're doing what you're doing, why you're smiling, why, why you're rejoicing, why you're going on. Amen. Praise God in the middle of, because they don't see what you see. Let me tell you this, praise God. I mean, I know that we have to have faith. But a part of having faith in God is allowing God to show you something. Because truth be told, there are times when you need to see something. Oh, shut that on my yet. Hallelujah. And he'll show you. God is faithful. Praise the name of our God. Hallelujah. Just wanted to, amen, praise God. Amen. Share those things with you. Amen. Praise the name of our Lord. Praise God. Amen. So getting back to uh, the text, Acts 15. Now, y'all pray for me. Praise God. Getting back to the text and, you know, he's, Peter, and, and, and um, in verse 12, I'll, I'll rehearse this again. He says, and then all the multitude kept silent. And this is one of the things that it sort of, you know, I, I didn't really realize as many times as you read something, Amen. Praise God. But this, if you will, this this um, this uh, discussion took place. Look at what it says here. Then all the multitude kept silent. There was a great number of people. Amen. Praise God that were there in that audience and gave audience to to, to Barnabas and Paul and gave audience. In other words, they gave them their undivided attention. They they wanted to hear what these brothers had to say and, 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 and declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought. Look at what it says, among the Gentiles by them. I want you to understand that in the minds of many of the Jews, the, you know, they were, Gentiles were less than nothing. They were dogs, praise God. Amen. I know we talk about the Samaritans and we may get there a little later, praise God. Amen. But even the, 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 the they were just thought to be as dogs. I, I want you to even think about the fact when you look at, amen, the temple and how that, you know, that, 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 and how it was set up and, you know, they had the various courts and the only place that the Gentile could go or come to was that outer court. And that outer court was a busy place, praise God. It was highly trafficked and everything like that. Not necessarily, amen, with people's focus on, amen, going to the, uh, going to the, uh, uh, you know, doing worship and things of this nature. It was in that area, amen, where the Lord uh, overturned the tables and all of this. It was that place, amen. They were doing business in that court. That was as far as that they could go. So that show, kind of shows you the attitude among the Jews about these Gentiles. And there were signs there that if you went any further, you, you could be subject to death. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. You know, you, 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 you kind of, you know, you look at, you know, you know, when you think about it, you know, from our perspective sometimes, and you, you know, you would, you would say, Amen. Praise God. I, I want to make sure you, you know, church, if you will, the physical building and things of this nature, you want to make sure somebody can get as close, amen, praise God, to the front or what have you, to make sure that they hear this word, praise God. But there, there is this thing here, amen, praise God, it's just simply giving them, amen, what is left, praise They were an afterthought. 
Praise God. I, I, I want to read something that, that Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians. And uh, just bear along, because these are things that we need to understand. And I think it also helps us amen, to better understand why things were going on the way they were going on. Praise the Lord. And, and, and Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, and he, he, he makes the statement, and he says, in verse 11, he says, wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision by the Jews in the flesh made by hands. Look at what it says, made by hands. That at that time, you were without Christ, being, look at what it says, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Look at what it says, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, were made nigh, how? By the blood of Christ, for he is our peace and have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, having abolished in his flesh by going to the cross, praise God. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself a of twain, that is two, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God, amen, in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity, enmity means hostility, amen, thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. The same message, message that same gospel, was, was preached, was proclaimed to them that were afar off and them that were not. Them that were not, the Jews. Them that were afar off, the Gentiles. The same message was proclaimed. Praise God. And amen, just going very quickly to chapter number four, and he makes this statement, amen, praise God. There is in, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all, praise God. Amen. I guess I should have read that third verse, and it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That, amen, the enemy Amen, praise God. Even Satan himself and those that are with him, praise God. Amen. They don't come, amen, praise God, with something new, but they come with the same thing. It may be packaged a little differently, but it's the same thing. Praise God. Amen. He understands and he knows there was hostility. There was between the Jew and the Gentile. But look at what he says here, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, praise God. That word endeavoring there means to work hard at this, praise God. Amen to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We don't have to make the unity. We don't have to manufacture it. It already exists, praise God. All we got to do is what? Keep it. Lord, have mercy. Keep what God has already established. Hallelujah. So in him, we can have peace. And this is why when I look at what's going on in, 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 in our nation today and even in the world, Amen. Praise God. When you think about all of this, praise God, all of the hostility, all of the hatred, you know, and all of these things, praise the name of our God. Amen. The only way I know that you can, amen, get above this is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Look at what he said again. Amen. Praise God. In verse number 15 of that second chapter, having abolished in the flesh, the enmity, the, the hostility, the hostility between the Jew and the Gentile, praise God. How did he do it? He did it, amen, praise God, by coming and dying, praise the name of our Lord. And so when you think about it, praise God, hallelujah, this can only happen 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is one reason why we've got to pray. This is one reason why we have got to turn over our place. It's not just simply for those of us that are already in the body, praise God, but you see what's going on. And you understand, praise God, you can't legislate this, praise the Lord. You can give me all the laws you want to give me, but until the heart changes, glory to God, hallelujah, it won't work. History has already taught us that. You go back to the Reconstruction period where they, amen, praise God, gave, amen, praise the name of our Lord, the African-American, amen, praise God, all of these rights and privileges and all of this, and it lasted for a good 10 years. And after that, it all went south. You know why? Because hearts had not changed. Praise God. And the only one that I know <laughs> that can change a heart like that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Do I have a witness that he changed my heart? Amen. Glory to Amen. God. He changed it. Praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. And I, I'm just, and, and, and so that's why, you know, we, see, we, we done got caught up because we're looking at all this in the news and we're looking at it, amen, praise God, on our cell phones and we're just, amen, hanging on every bit of information, praise God. And we're forgetting all about the fact, what should we be doing? Crying out to the Lord. That's what, you, what we should be doing. When, when, when the scriptures tells us that the righteous man, glory to God, hallelujah, his prayers avail of much, what we're doing everything but praying. We're sitting in front of the, you know, watching the stuff and, and going, my Lord, my God. That's the only time his name come up. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Then all of a sudden, our feelings and emotions get up in this thing and we, we done got mad. We done got angry. We're looking at folk who haven't done a thing to you. And it's just boiling up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But, but I want to point you back to, 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 to the, the prophet Elijah. They that be with us. Think about that. I need you all to think about that. See, you know, we can think in terms of what Elijah is saying to the servant. And he says, you know, they that be with us are more, okay? But I want you, again, now to take off those glasses and put back on the Lord's glasses because you need to see something. Here's what you need to see. See, geographically speaking, you know, what the Lord showed the servant is that the Syrian army was surrounded by the host, the host of the Lord, all right? So essentially they are surrounding the city, but the Lord's army is surrounding or in, in, basically encompassing or the mountains. Guess what? That the city is surrounded by, okay? Y'all see this? Praise God. Now, here's the thing. That's the Lord showing the servant, you know, that what the prophet said, they that be with us are more. Now, let me, let me, let me just put this on now. When, when we extrapolate that, when you, but Lord, what are we, look at what we are dealing with. We're dealing with something that is worldwide. Praise God. Y'all see what I'm, where I'm going? Well, well, don't you know, and I'm not just simply talking about the pandemic, but I'm talking about, amen, praise God, the, 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 the demonic things that we're dealing with. They, they're not just simply, amen, located exclusively here in the States. This thing is worldwide. But do you not know that still applies? They that be with us are more. So the host of the Lord may have surrounded, encompassed the mountains, but God has a host that can surround this world. Y'all may not believe that, praise God, but this is, this is, the, this is the level 
amen, that we're dealing with now. Praise God. We're not just simply dealing with something that is local or something that is national, but this is worldwide. And guess what? They that be with him, with us, are more. Do y'all believe that? Amen. 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 And it, this is one reason why we can go out and do what we do because, you know, we are more. Amen. Yes, we are more than conquerors. Praise God. Amen. But they're literally, amen, praise the name of our Lord. Amen. When you think about it, amen, praise God that when we do what we do, when we are, when we, Amen. Praise God. Go about doing the Lord's business. Amen. Carrying out, amen, what he would have us to do. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then we, we, we talk about this all the time. He goes before us. Isaiah talks about him being our real reward, our real God. And, you know, when you think about all of these things, amen, praise God, who can be against us? Who, who can overcome us if God is going before us? Amen. I'm not talking about boasting in ourselves, but I'm talking about boasting in our God. Praise God. So that we, and, and keeping the focus on what we need to do. So let's not get caught up in the drama, all of this stuff. Let's just keep our focus on God. And allowing God to lead us and to navigate us in our prayers, in our thoughts, praise God. And see, here's the thing. We don't have to be in a certain place to pray. But throughout the day, we're, we're pleading the blood. We're, we're, we're praying, amen, praise God, amen, as the Lord directs us to pray. We don't have to wait, amen, praise God, to come together. Long before we formally come together, we should have already been praying. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We, there needs to be such a praying spirit in us that there are times when we wake up, maybe in the morning. Amen. Praise God. And you find yourself waking up praying. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I believe that. I believe that the Lord can use me even in my sleep. Hallelujah. My Lord. Praise God. Amen. I have woken up saying, thank you, Jesus. I don't know what I said, but he knows. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. So we thank God, amen, for you. And then tonight we, we're, we're going to stop at um, here at verse, amen, praise God, number 12, and we'll pick up at 13. I truly hope you got something, amen, out of the lesson today. Praise God. And so we, again, we thank God for you, amen, in Jesus' name. Um, I...